Today on Exploring Scotland's History, we are going to begin to delve into the Dalmally, Glen Orkey and Glen Stray area. And we're going to start at Glen Orkey Church. There have been records of organised religion on this site since the 14th century. Before the 14th century it has been referred to as a hermitage, so there obviously is some religious significance in this area. St Conan is mentioned as coming to this area as a disciple of St Columba, really on a mission towards the Picts. St Conan, as we know, has the kirk in his name. I'll put a link to the video at the very end where we visit St Conan's Kirk and on our travels round Dalmally we will come across St Conan as well. There are a lot of headstones in this graveyard in memorial to Fletcher's. And I would imagine with the amount of conflict between Campbells and McDougalls and Robert the Bruce and the Campbells and the McDougalls, the Fletchers would have had plenty to do. This is the headstone of John McLaurin and we will discuss McLaurins in the area at a later date when we go to see a McLaurin monument. But what is interesting about this one is this edifice. We have discussed on various videos, um, I think the Gilchrist Cross video on Kintyre, I'll put a link at the end where we discuss uh, the need for mort safes and the amount of grave robbing in the name of science that would have been happening at a certain period in time. I'm sure you've all heard of Bark and Hare. This is a direct result of their gory work. Between 1390 and 1528, it is recorded that the chiefs of Clan Gregor, MacGregor, were buried in this kirk. It's actually recorded in the book of the Dean of Lismore and his writings do also mention that John Du MacGregor, his burial in Glen Orkey, was announced by a large meteor that everyone could see. It is recorded that the second chief of Clan Gregor was buried under the high altar on the north side of the old church. The old church is long gone but archaeology did find bits and pieces to prove that it had been there. It must be said we're on quite an elevated spot here and old records show that this kirk and kirkyard was actually on the natural island at some stage so it would have been surrounded by the River Orkey. This present church was built in 1811. It was designed by James Elliot of Edinburgh and actually when the church was built there were still parts of the old medieval church still in situ. It's octagonal with a very obvious Gothic design. We were discussing the church being part of a naturally formed island and as you can see we're on quite a bank here and as we go round there is the water orchid trees are going to blow in its way that would be sod's law but that is how close we are to the river and obviously it had formed a natural bow in the 1500s
It's Argyle, so I'll probably show you one or two Campbell graves. In the Kirkyard we do have a Campbell enclosure, a mighty fine it is, with my favourite dry stone walling to commemorate Captain Robert Campbell Craig, 1798. Isabel Campbell, I imagine 1847, 17, maybe the daughter of Robert Campbell, doesn't say what age he was, says what age she was. I know there is a presumption that a lot of people died very young years back and sometimes they did and generally it was in infancy or due to war. Um, but realistically, if you had managed to get over all the horrific childhood diseases that were out there, there was a good chance that you would live a long and fruitful life. Isabel did. Let's go and see. Isabel died when she was 106. Go, Isabel. I'm not very sure where it is, but if I do come across it, I'll let you know. But there is supposed to be a corner of the churchyard that has been set aside specifically for children of the Tinkers so that they can be given a Christian burial. Often the days gone by, they were buried outside the churchyard. Ugh, not nice. When repairs were made to the church 30 years ago, there were scatterings of bone fragments find and the footings of the old medieval church underneath this one. Archaeology has revealed that the high altar where the second chief of Clan Gregor would have been buried would have probably been underneath where the present day tower is. There are several medieval slabs brought over from Inna Shale and reused, which was the thing in those days. This one probably came from Inna Shale too. We will replace the moss back around it and protect it again. I like to leave things as I find them. This looks like another possible one from Innishale. You can definitely see the warrior. Looks very like the ones we saw over in Innishale. Part of the slab remains are said to be part of the second Chief of McGregor's burial kist, like a, a stone coffin. There is a good chance a lot of the rubble and stones that we see would have been placed here during the Reformation. Often was the way during the Reformation, altars would have been moved Burials within the church were banned in 1572, so there's a good chance that whatever stone kists would have already been there were unfortunately fired rather unceremoniously out into the graveyard.
So that's the beginning of our foray into Del Mali. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think there was going to be that much. And now I've been looking at it, there's that much. We will go up into Glens Grey and further up Glen Orkey and round Del Mali itself and just have a wee look at how busy and bustling and how much social history there is to this site. If you did enjoy this video, please hit like, hit subscribe, make a comment, it really helps the channel grow. If you would like to join me on my other social media, I'll leave links below for Facebook, Instagram, and if anyone fancies buying me a coffee, thumbs up to those guys who already have. It's helping me buy equipment to do my filming. All the links are below. Thanks so much for watching.